Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and welcome back to another Sunday Sew Along. We've got a tutorial this week. Um, well actually two weeks ago we finished up our last Sew Along and I was ill last week. So next week we'll be starting the Ziggy Jacket, uh, Style Arc Ziggy Jacket um, Sew Along. Um, I haven't started filming that. I'm a little nervous about it just because <laughs> it's gonna be a really big project. Not nervous about sewing it, just more nervous about yeah the filming and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, that will be next week. But for this week, I've gotten so many questions on my boat neck hack for my, I use the Concord t-shirt, but for any t-shirt pattern, um, how I do that. And so I thought I would show you guys, I was drafting the neckline for my daughters, um, her Concord, because she also was inter interested in having a boat neckline option. Um, and she loves the Concord as well because it has cup sizes. Um, obviously you can use any t-shirt pattern that you want. Um, and I had to refilm <laughs> showing the drafting part because I hit the wrong button and anyway it didn't film the first time so we went back to the drawing board and did it all over again I think it'll be fine so I'm just showing you how I drafted the um, boat netline for this top and then how I sew it on so um, this is a nice wide neckline so it doesn't need to stretch so I interface the um, facing pieces and top stitch it down I just think it has a really nice finish I love this so much more than my other one that I did where I just followed the instructions my original one, I had copied a neckline of a different pattern, the Sew Over It um, Edie Top from their Work to Weekend uh, ebook, and I just traced off that neckline, so I finished it the way they said to finish it, um, which is just turning it under and stitching it, and I just don't like the way it's wearing. So, made myself another one. This one has long sleeves. My other one has three-quarter sleeves, so we're all good. <laughs> Um, I was on the fence if I was going to do another striped shirt or not, but I just love a good striped Breton style top, so not mad that I made this one. Um, and actually, this is the last piece of my winter capsule. I even got my sweater knitted. You guys haven't seen it yet, but my pink sweater has been knitted because I was in quarantine for so long. I got it completely finished. It's actually drying right now. It's been blocked. Um, I'm blocking it and stuff right now, so everything is done with my winter capsule. I can't wait to share that with you all. Anyway, this was the last piece of it, so um, yeah, moving on. All right, guys, let me know if you have any questions down below, and I will see you on Tuesday for another video. Um, well, Tuesday and Friday next week, and then also see you on Sunday for the start of the Ziggy, um, the Style Arc Ziggy jacket sew along. So that'll be a big one. <laughs> All right, have a good one, guys. Bye. Okay, guys, I just filmed this, and <laughs> something happened to the footage, and it all went away. Um, or I hit the button wrong. Ugh, the joys of filming. Okay, so we're going to go through this real quick. I've already drafted everything, so we're just going to talk through this. Really apologize for that. Okay, so we're working on my daughter's pattern because um, I've, mine's all messed up. And this is the Concord t-shirt by Cashmere at Patterns. And um, she also wants a boat neckline, so I went ahead and drafted a boat neckline onto her pattern as well. But I want to talk about this a little bit. You don't have to use the cashmere at Concord. You can use whatever t-shirt pattern that you like that fits you well. This is just our favorite one um, because it comes with full bust sizes and we just love it. Um, so for this neckline, when I originally did mine, I used the neckline from the Sew Over It Edie Top from the Work to Weekend um, ebook because I just loved the neckline. I don't like the way they finish it off. I prefer mine with facings, which is what we're going to do today, but I did love the shape of the neckline. I just like the way the Concord fits me a lot better. So um, I just laid that pattern over this pattern and redrew the neckline, and that's kind of how I got the, the neckline that I got. Um, but I'm going to give you numbers, so you don't have to buy another pattern if you don't want to, and um, you can, you know, just draft your own on whatever t-shirt pattern that you enjoy. So here we have my daughter's front. Now, I have all the necklines marked out here, which you can see. I think you can see. Which you can see here. Um, the V-neckline, the scoop neckline, and then the top where I've cut it is the crew neckline or the jewel, the higher neckline. And um, I just have this one front. Everyone asks me, well, how do you know? Like, if I'm cutting out the V-neckline, how do you know where to cut? I use a tracing wheel that has the um, points on it. And I just, so if this were laying on fabric and I've cut out everything with my rotary cutter, I take this, press hard, and trace the line all the way up. And then when I pull the paper away, you can see little dots on the fabric, and then I'll cut it with my um, rotary cutter. So that's how I do it. Now that does 
puncture your paper, obviously, and after so many times it can tear the paper. Um, for right now, I'm just putting tape over those areas to make them stronger. Eventually, I need to trace trace these over onto um, like Swedish tr tr tracing paper. Um, I mean, I probably could trace like three separate or four separate fronts for each of the different necklines if I really wanted to, uh, but it's, this is working for now and that's just what I do. Okay, so I just wanted to answer that. All right, to draft the new neckline, the boat neckline is the purple one. And what I've done is I've taken my ruler and I have gone seven eighths of an inch in from the shoulder, okay? And made a mark. And you want it to go straight a little bit down here. And then I took my curved ruler here and I wanted this line to die in at that um, higher neckline. So I basically just kind of measured that up, played with it a little bit until I, you know, that was a, a good place and then I traced it in. So there's my front neckline. Now for the facing, what I did was I took a piece of tracing paper. Um, this is medical exam paper, like what they put on the um, uh, bench where you sit at the doctor's office. You can get it on Amazon for very inexpensive. It's a nice way to paper. You can see through it. It's a little bit heavier than, than tissue paper, so you can draw on it pretty easily, but it's still thin enough that it irons really flat and it also, um, you can see through it for tracing. So it's my favorite. You can get it on Amazon. Just look for medical exam paper. But what I did is I laid this on top. Line up my lines here. Is that the front? Yeah, that's the front. Okay. Um, and I put some weights down just to keep the paper from moving. I've just traced from the pattern below the shoulder line and center front, which goes on the fold. Then I drew in my neckline, which followed that purple line on here and then into the higher neckline. And then I just took my ruler. And I like my necklines to be um, an inch wide. Now, the seam allowance on this pattern here at the neck edge is three eighths of an inch. That's just what is included in this pattern. So I made this three, one and three eighths of an inch wide. So once the seam allowance is gone, I'll have an inch um, wide facing because I just surged the edge of this. Nothing, none of this gets cut off. Um, so I don't need a seam allowance on the bottom end. But then I just take my ruler and just mark, you know, one and three eighths, and I just go all the way around, marking little dash lines all the way around, and then I connect the dots. Okay, so there's my front facing. I will cut one of these out of fabric on the fold, and then one of these of interfacing on the fold, and I just use regular interfacing. I don't use any knit interfacing or anything, just regular old interfacing. Um, I use the lightweight stuff. I just kind of like that a little better for this kind of project. So I use the um, I use the Palmer Pletch Perfect Fuse Shear, but um, it's just the regular. There's it's not Trico interfacing. It's not knit interfacing. It's not stretch interfacing. It's just the sheer interfacing because again this neckline does not need to stretch it'll go over your head without needing to stretch and then it just stays looking nice for a really long time so I've made a few shirts like this and it's it's a really nice neckline and it just looks really professional all right and then for the back piece now on this pattern um, for all the necklines that are included the back piece is the same but the boat neck does come down a little bit lower it's just the nature of the boat neck and for the one that I've done, I have dropped it down half of an inch from the regular neckline. And then again, seven eighths of an inch in from the shoulder point here. Um, and I have just gone half of an inch and then pulled this guy in just to connect from half of an inch out here to the seven eighths of an inch. So seven of an eight, seven eighths of an inch into the shoulder from this inside of the neck point. And then I dropped it a half of an inch down, half of an inch, half of an inch, kind of keeping it the same shape. Obviously it won't be exactly the same shape because we go wider here, but you know, kind of trying to follow that as much as possible. So there we have our new boat neckline for the back. And then again, just like with the front, I did this. <laughs> okay, I took the paper and put pattern weights down just so everything stays the same. Traced off center back here, traced off my shoulder line, traced my new neckline here, and then again an inch and three eighths, 
traced it and just, you know, took my ruler and do, 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 and then just did little hash marks to get around that curve. So we've got a pretty uniform inch and three eighths all the way around and then just connected the dots. So again, cut one of these out on the fold of fabric and one of these out of the fold of the interfacing as well. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to switch back to my pattern now though. Um, so we'll be working on my size <laughs> from here on out. Not that it matters, but, um, I'm going to go ahead and cut out my front, my back, my two sleeves, and then my facing pieces. And I'm going to go ahead and interface those. So I will meet you back here with all of those pieces. Okay. So I have cut out a back neck facing and I've got the interfacing on it. I've cut out a front neck facing interfaced, obviously. Um, so I've got those two pieces and then I've got my back cut on the fold, my front cut on the fold, and then my sleeves, which obviously I'm only going to show you how to do the neckline on in this video, but the sleeves to make the t-shirt. All right. So, um, we're going to go over to the machines now and, um, I'm going to be using my serger for a little bit of this, but you don't have to, um, you could use like your overlock stick on stitch on your machine or a zigzag stitch or, you know, whatever your, or pink it if you wanted to, whatever your preference. So, um, yeah, let's go over to the machines and we will do this neckline. Okay. So I have sewn or surged actually, but you know, however you finish off, I've sewn my, um, uh, shoulder seams here <laughs> and press them towards the back. And then, um, now we're going to sew our shoulder seams of our, um, facing together. Now, everything else I'm going to be doing other than finishing off the edge of the facing, um, is going to be done on the sewing machine, not the serger. So, all right, so let's come over here. All right. So I've got my, um, here we go. <laughs> There's my back facing and my front facing. And I'm just going to do the shoulder seams on both sides. And again, this pattern has a three eighths of an inch seam allowance. So I'm just going to um, I've got a ballpoint needle on my machine and um, I'm sewing with a, a three millimeter stitch length. That's just my preference for when I'm doing knits. But I'm using a straight stitch. It's one shoulder seam. You want to make sure all your, these facing pieces can get so like, um, go willy nilly really easily <laughs> because they're just kind of long and cut on the curve and on the bias and just can get uh, out of control easily. All right. Okay, so now my facing pieces that have been interfaced are connected to the shoulder seam. So I'm gonna go to the ironing board and I'm gonna press them open. And then I'm going to go the outside edge that will not be attached to the neckline. I'm gonna go around with my serger. I'm not cutting anything off. I'm just finishing the edge with the serger. And I will meet you right back here to um, put it onto the shirt. All right, so we've got our facing that is all finished, and I've just gone around with the serger just to finish that off nicely. Um, now, this next step, we're going to go ahead and attach the facing to the neckline edge. I'm actually going to turn this over now because we need it right sides together. You could do this part on the serger if you wanted to. Um, just kind of up to you. You don't really need to, but um, you could if you wanted to. So just kind of whatever you're in the mood for. All right, so I'm going to be matching up. This is my, sometimes with boat necklines, it's very easy to get the front and the back confused because <laughs> they're both wide. All right, so mine's going to go like this. Now, I have marked center front on my, oh, I thought I did. I didn't on my front. Hold on. I'm only very good about clipping into center front and center back when I cut things on the fold. I didn't do it on this one. All right, yuki dukey. So I am just matching All right, right sides together. <laughs> I am matching my center front notches and I um, snipped those in at 
on the facing and on the um, front and back. Well, now I have. <laughs> and then I'm just, I'm just putting pins in those center front pieces and then also at the shoulder seams. And again, I've pressed my shirt shoulder seams towards the back and then my facing shoulder seams open only because I just wanted to finish off that shoulder seam <clears throat> on the shirt with a serger because um, you will be able to see that inside the shirt and you won't see the, in the facing seam lines once all is said and done. All right. Okay, so now we are gonna go to the machine and we are going to sew this neckline at three eighths of an inch and again, straight stitch because this neckline does not need, you will not pop stitches because it doesn't have to stretch. Now, if you were doing a tight neckline, yes, this would pop, the stitches would pop as soon as you went to um, put it over your head. But that is not the case with the boot neckline. No. Oh, also at this point, what is actually a good idea? And I kind of wish I'd done it. Okay, before <laughs> you stitch this down, if you want to put a tag, stitch a tag onto your facing piece um, because it can be very confusing as to what's the front and back of a boat neckline. Um, I think I might actually go do that. I'm going to go do that really quickly and then we will sew this neckline in. Okay, I sewed that in really quick. <laughs> it is really hard to tell front from back in boat neckline shirts. So, all right, now we're gonna sew this down. Now just to make sure your tag is below that seam line. I think mine's probably like right there at that seam line. All right, so now we're just gonna sew around. Now I am putting the um, shirt on the feed dogs because it's not interfaced. Just a good rule of thumb is to always keep the uninterfaced piece against the feed dogs, because it's the less stable. So I want to make sure that that seam allowance is going the way I want it to. Okay, so now we've sewn the facing to the neckline. Now we're gonna go around and clip into that seam. This is just gonna help everything lie nice and flat. So I'm just gonna cut two, but not through that stitching line. Be very careful that you're not cutting something you don't mean to cut. But this is just gonna help that any of that curve. Now, this is a little less important with knits than it is with um, wovens because knits, you know, just the mechanics of a knit, it will give. But, I mean, I still do it. I just think it handles nicely. Makes a nicer neckline. Just be careful. None of the shirt is getting caught up under there.
Okay. So you flipped all the way around. We are now going to understitch. So now we're going to sew around it again. But this time we are going to push the facing away from the top. It's fine. I always like to start in the back. I don't really know why. <laughs> Ooh, that tag got close. Okay. So now we're just going to sew on the facing, but we want that um, seam allowance to be going this way towards the facing. I have said it before. I will continue to say it. Understitching is one of my favorite like sewing techniques because it is so magical. <laughs> it's just so amazing the difference it makes in a neckline or a facing or a pocket or whatever. Um, the way that it lies and like everything just tucks in so nice and neatly. I love understitching. Okay, now I'm going to take this over to the ironing board and I'm going to press, ouch, ouch, press and pen the facing down to the wrong side all the way around. So I'm going to go over to the ironing board and do that and then I'll meet you right back here. Okay, so everything has been ironed and penned. And because this is all still like flat, because we haven't done any side seams or anything, we're just going to go around the horn like this. All right, so now we're just going to stitch this in place um, with a straight stitch. I like the top stitching. I think it looks expensive. I think it looks nice on knit tops, but you know, I guess you could hand stitch this down if you didn't want to see any top stitching. Um, I just, I hate when facings aren't tops. I hate facings unless they're top stitched down because when they're not top stitched down, then they roll up and it's annoying. <laughs> All right, so I'm basically just following right on the edge of this serging. I could have done this on my cover stitch, but I just wanted one line of stitching. And um, I want my shirt against the feed dogs again because it's the uninterfaced side because my facing is on top here and it has been interfaced. And we are just gonna go around this neckline. There we go. Okay, let's look at this from the right side. Oops. 
So there we've got just a really, I know the stripes make it kind of hard, but a really beautiful finished neckline. I've got my tag in there so I can tell the back from the front easily. Um, yeah, it's just a really nice finish. So there you go, guys. That is how I drafted and sew in my boat neck, um, the facings for the boat necks on my t-shirts. And you'll just finish off the t-shirt per normal from now. Okay, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and I'll answer those as soon as possible. Have a good one, y'all.